All right, partners, we back. And we got the data mines for the bunny banner. So that includes the refines and all the other good stuff. So like usual, we're just going to go ahead and start things off with the refines for the units. And forgive me, but it's really early into the night. So I have potato images for Selkie and Forsyth. But we're going to start things off with Legendary Celica, one of the units getting a remix here. So let's see. Her Seraphim weapon has 14 might, 2 range, grants speed up 3. If unit initiates combat or is in two spaces of an ally, grants attack and speed up 5 to unit during combat. And deals damage equal to 25% of foe's res, including when dealing damage with a special triggered before combat. Okay, special triggered before combat, obviously that's an AoE. At the start of turn, if unit is within two spaces of an ally, grants special cooldown charge plus one per attack during combat to unit for one turn. And also if special cooldown count is at its maximum value, grants special cooldown count minus one. If unit is within three spaces of an ally, grants another attack and speed up five to unit during combat. Okay, so combining this with her beast skill is going to be really good, right? Because she has 50% damage reduction cut. So you combine that with this true damage effect here, 25% of the foe's res. So the higher they're stacking res, the more damage they're going to take. It's the same reason why Brave Seliph is pretty messed up. Because it's like the higher the defense they have, they're just going to take more damage. So it's like counterintuitive there. You, you want to build up res to tank a mage or build up defense to tank a melee unit. But this unit is going to flip that around on you. Also, we have a special cooldown charge effect, which is going to play really well with her desperation effect. So she just hits you twice in a row. The first hit ramps into specials and then the second hit could just be that special. She also has a times pulse effect down there. You could combine that with times pulse four if you wanted. Get her to minus two cooldown count. Then hit him once, get the plus one special cooldown charge. And then the second hit would be a four hit cooldown such as um, what are the four hit specials like Dragon Fang or Astra, I guess. Th those are some options. And then we're looking at attack and speed up 10 as well. Okay, pretty interesting. Not too shabby for a player phaser. All right, let's take a look at what Mila got. Now, unfortunately, Mila's C skill was very underwhelming. They didn't really do much for it. So let's see what they gave her weapon at least. So grants defense up three. Grants all stats up X during combat. Where X is the number of allies within seven rows and seven columns centered on unit times two with a max of six. Okay, so she's essentially at all stats of 6. 7x7 <laughs> seven seven is like the whole freaking map. There's no way you're going to miss out on that. Grants all stats of 4 to allies in 7 rows and 7 columns centered on unit during combat. Okay, that's they buffed her support effect. Before this, it was only plus 2, so it went up by an extra 2 points. And then we have adaptive damage, of course, because she's a dragon. Grants another all stats of 4. Okay, th this one's to herself. I if it was again to allies and she was doing like plus eight to all allies, that would have been raw as hell. But nah, this another all stats of four is going to be for her. So she's effectively at all stats of 10 right now. If allies are within seven rows and seven columns centered on unit, unit neutralizes bonuses to foe's attack during combat. Allies in seven rows and seven columns centered on unit gain neutralized bonuses to foe's attack. Oh, that's good. Okay, it's not like the craziest thing in the world, but it's pretty solid. You can prevent them from gaining plus attack bonuses. And then you're just giving all your allies all stats of four. So they did make her a slightly better support. And they did give her way more combat potential by giving her all stats of 10. And then also she gets the um, nullify enemies attack bonuses. So it's not the worst. Also, we got to keep in mind her C skill is preventing enemies from doing a follow up. And then she inflicts guard. She can still isolate and all of those things. So it didn't turn out as bad as it looked when we were just looking at the C skill. This is OK. OK, let's take a look at creator sword now. So this is going to be for the male and female Byleth because they both have this weapon. All right. 16 might one range HP up three accelerate special trigger. During combat, neutralizes effects that guarantee foes follow-up attacks and prevent units follow-up attacks. Grants special, or basically he's got null follow-up and then he's got tempo. And then if unit initiates combat or is in two spaces of an ally, grants all stats of four during combat. Okay, they added some stats there. Prior to this, it was just null follow-up and tempo. 
At the start of combat, if unit's HP is over 25%, gets another all stats of four to unit during combat and reduce damage from foe's first attack by 30% during combat. If special triggers neutralizes effects from non-special skills that reduce damage reduction. Okay, wow. Yeah, remember what I was saying about what they could do for this weapon? I was saying, like, basically just give him all sats of five and then give him dodge. They didn't quite give him dodge, but they gave him 30% DR on the enemy's first hit. They gave him all stats up eight, and then they gave him nullify DR when triggering a special. Yo, that's... That's really good. You combine that with no follow up and guard or no follow up tempo and minus one special trigger with nullifying special skills, non special skills that turn off DR. That's a really sick combo. This is a good weapon. Okay, let, let's keep going here. We have Astrum up next, the old school unsung hero of arena mode. Let's see if they gave him the goods. All right, so Mercurius, 16 might, one range, HP up three. Grants attack up 3. At the start of turn, if unit's HP is over 25%, grants all stats up 6 to unit. And allies within 2 spaces a unit for 1 turn. Bonus granted to unit even if no allies are within 2 spaces. This is already massively buffed. Prior to this, I think it was weapon restricted. Like, it could only be done for sword, lance, axe, and bow type allies or something like that, right? Like, it wasn't just flat out all stats up 6 to everybody. So they made this better, and they also raised the stats as well. It was only doing plus four. Okay, also at the start of combat, if unit's HP is over 25%, grants all stats of four to unit during combat. So he's still buffing everybody, and now he's getting some extra stats on top of that to himself. If unit is within three spaces of an ally, gets another all stats of X to unit during combat, where X is four plus the highest bonus on each stat between unit and allies within three spaces, which is going to be six. So that's like all stats of 10. Calculates each stat bonus independently. Okay, so they definitely made him better for fighting. This is not bad. I mean, I was hoping they would have gave him more effects, like things like null follow-up and tempo and etc. But they just turned him into more of a stat ball. What would have really been crazy is if he could give people bonus doubler and himself. But it doesn't look like it's going to pan out that way. RIP the dream of getting a baby legendary Elliewood, but still this is pretty good for him similar to Norn too I thought Norn's was pretty good it's just that people don't really use Norn anymore and the same applies to this guy he his refine looks okay it's just that there's not really much use to using this guy anymore okay here we go with these potato images from freaking game facts <laughs> these were the big the fastest refines of these guys I could find on moments notice so Forsyth, I forgot what his weapon was called. I think it was Soul Lance. So 16 might, 1 range, HP up 3, grants res up 3. When unit deals damage to foe during combat, recovers 14 HP to unit. Even if no damage is dealt, at the start of combat, if unit's HP is over 25%, inflicts attack and defense minus 5 on the foe and reduces the effect of deep wounds by half during combat. Okay, that's a lot of recovery. Let's see what else he's got. If unit is within three spaces of an ally, inflicts another attack and defense minus five on the foe during combat. Foe cannot make a follow-up attack. And also, if unit's HP is over half at the start of combat, reduce damage from foe's first attack by 30%. Yeah, nah, th this ain't it, bro. <laughs> this ain't it, man. They, I, I was thinking they might have gave him the Kiel treatment where he just gets a massive attack reduction to the foe. You know how crazy Kiel's refine was? <laughs> This is not on that level whatsoever. He, he's got a lot of recovery. 14 HP is a lot. I'm not going to lie. When he deals damage, it's not even after combat. Every time he hits the enemy, he's getting back 14 HP. So that is good. And he also cuts deep wounds in half. So at worst, this is still giving him 7 HP. But it, it's just not like... It, it's just not good enough. 30% DR only on the foe's first attack. Attacking defense minus 10, basically, to the foe. Yeah, this is better armored units than this, unfortunately. Okay, and finally, let's go ahead and take a look at Selkie here. Now, <laughs> we got a bit of an issue because half of the first half of her stuff is cut out. Looks like if unit initiates combat or if foe's HP is over 75% at the start of combat, grants all stats of 4 to unit during combat. 
At the start of turn, if unit is adjacent to only beast or dragon allies, or if unit is not adjacent to any ally, transforms, and when transformed, gains attack up two, inflicts attack and defense minus four on the foe, and then you get impact as well. So typical cavalry beast transformation there. At the start of combat, if unit's HP is over 25%, grants attack and speed up four to unit, neutralizes effects that guarantee foes follow-up attacks, and effects that prevent units follow-up attacks, and if unit is transformed, inflicts all stats on minus four on the foe during combat. Okay, so she's getting all stats up four. She's inflicting all stats minus four. She's getting an extra all stats of four. So that's basically like a 12-point stat swing on all stats. <laughs> Pretty good. And then null follow-up also. She's also doing the attack and defense minus four when she transforms. So that's... What is that? Attack and defense minus 16 <laughs> effectively to the foe. That, that's pretty good. I, I could have swore she had damage reduction, though. Didn't, didn't the Selkie have res-based DR? Or am I tripping out? Hold on. Let's let's see if we can get a better image of Selkie here. Yeah, here. <laughs> wow. Right on cue. Very first thing we pulled up. Okay, so I'm pretty sure. Yeah, the, okay. So the image we looked at before had a lot of this cut out. So, minus one special trigger. If unit's res is better than the foe's res, deals 70% of the difference between stats, which is the max plus seven. So, you need like 10 more points of res than the enemy to do this. And reduce damage from attacks during combat and AoE specials by a percent equal to the difference between stats times four. Okay, so everything we just said, basically like attack and defense minus 16, and then everything else minus 12 to the foe. Then we got 40% DR based on res. We got minus one special trigger, and then we're getting res-based true damage. So, th yeah, th this is certainly a lot better than it was before. Th this is pretty good, actually. So, not too shabby there from Selkie. So, who would I say won this batch? Let's see. Um, Selica's looking pretty good. When you combine this with her B skill, Sola Zofia, th this looks pretty str pretty strong. Uh, Mila, I, I don't know if I would put Mila in the top, but she's definitely a lot better. Bi Byleth might have won, actually. I, th I think I'm going to go with Byleth for this batch. Yes, absolutely. Okay, so Byleth, I'm calling him the winner here. Selkie is surprisingly really good, too. I think maybe Selika's probably in second place, and then S Selkie might be in third, honestly. that That's how it looks to me at the moment. So let me know in the comments section what you guys think about these refines and... We'll be coming back in just a sec and we'll be taking a look at the rest of the data mines.